Now that we have our income statement constructed, we need to discuss cash flows and how to complete it. Statements of cash flows shows the business's cash inflows and outflows for operating activities, which are the day-to-day -day standard operations, investing activities, which is buying and selling company assets, financing activities, which is loan activities and payments to and from owners. It's used to analyze cash for growth potential and cash burn down rates. When we're talking about growth potential, we're asking the question, does the business have enough cash reserves to finance expanding operations? When we're talking about cash burn down rates, we're talking about how quickly the business is running out of money. Here's my cash flow statements that I built off of the income statement. You can see the three sections on the cash flow statement that we discussed in the previous slide. Operating, investing, and financing. Operating is just the day-to-day -day operations. So I started out with that $77,400 that I have in revenues. My operating expenses were the $66,802. Here's where those numbers came from, my income statement. There's that $77,400. Here's the $66,802. Notice my month one also has some startup costs in it. But that also includes asset purchases and financing. Asset is investing and financing is how the business is being funded. So I'm getting $10,598 of cash just from operations each month. Notice that this does go up as I've decreased my marketing and advertising expense. In month one, I've purchased all of that equipment. And that equipment is $109,250. Equipment includes the physical tangible equipment and the intangible or the startup costs. It does not include my cash reserves because that's part of my cash balance. I'm not planning on making any other purchases of property, plant, and equipment the rest of the year, so that's why the rest of the 12 months are zeroed out. Now, where is this money coming from? Well, I've determined that I'm going to take $180,000 out of my personal savings and invest it into the business. So that is the owner contribution or my skin in the game. So I'm contributing $180,000 of cash to start this business. Then by the time I've used all my cash to buy all the assets and my $10,598 from cash operations, I have $81,348 of cash at the end of the month. Month one ending cash becomes month two's beginning cash. And you can see this pattern repeat itself all the way across. So that when we get to the end of year one, I have $205,426 worth of cash. So if you recall from earlier conversations in lecture, I said I wanted to have three months of expenses in my cash reserves before I'm going to start taking a salary. Well, if you multiply $66,802 of monthly operating expenses by three, you get $200,406. Bingo, I hit that goal at the end of month 12. So that means I can start taking an owner's salary beginning of month 13, which means beginning of year two. So I've projected out my cash flows to know when I can start taking a salary. If I need to take a salary sooner than that, I'm going to have to look to either in somehow increase my revenue so I generate more cash or I take a loan and start financing this business. But that's a topic for another day. So we've discussed sales forecasting, estimating costs, the income statement and cash flow statement, 
and cash utilization rates. Now we're going to compare our actual values to our budget to determine variances and strategize, which is right back at the beginning of this week's lecture content. We've come full circle on our journey. We started the lectures with where we wanted to end up, and the next three lectures were the steps on how to get there. Hopefully, these lectures help you to better understand the importance of financial statement analysis and the benefits of for doing the analysis on a regular basis for strategic planning. For your purposes in this class, your end goal is to know how much money you're going to need to get this business funded. Using my coffee house example, that was $180,000. I've decided to personally fund that. But that may not be always possible, which is part of the whole reason for you taking this class, is to know how to determine that $180,000 value and to come up with ideas on how you're going to actually get the money, to the $180,000 to do it. We also discuss when I'm going to start taking some owner draws. That also comes into play with whatever business plan you have at the funding plan that's going to coincide with it. That concludes the lectures on financial statement analysis. I hope you enjoyed them.